Hi, Francisco. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I mean, it's still a little weird because of the, you know, uh, the time change and uh, the clocks, on a Sunday. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's even our... though it's an hour, it still messes you up, right? It screws with your body clock, doesn't it? Especially when it gets light outside the window and, and you're like wondering why you're so tired. Yeah. Like, oh, God, I feel so bit groggy and this is our first sunday as well and there's a and it's a good reason why we've uh we've got our shit together early on a sunday to to get this record because uh we're going to britain for the yes. first time we have an international interview with a, a a great guest uh his name is larry dean and you know larry uh because you perform with him right yeah well larry's uh larry's a huge star in britain he's a you know fantastic stand-up he does plays the edinburgh festival all the time he's on all the panel shows on television as well but all uh, but yes i had a pleasure of meeting him i was told about this guy when i was over there i was like oh wait until you see this guy and then luckily enough i looked at my schedule and we wound up working together in brighton for a weekend and we hit it off and uh he's just a fantastic guy and he's he was a great guest wasn't he and you guys yeah, got yeah, along we- great we hit it off too as well in this interview. I uh, mean, he was, uh, yeah, he was very, uh, you know, like you said, very funny, very nice guy. I mean, we talked a, a, a lot about, you know, uh, how his, um, you know, because he started comedy like very early, like, you know, unlike us, you know, like he kind of like just went into it, you know, which was funny. Yeah. Like he took, a, he was going to take a course on comedy and then actually, you know, which actually worked to his benefit. So we'll talk, we, we, yeah. we discuss that in the pod. And um, we also talk about how, uh, his um his ways of uh when he what he brings to travel what he likes to travel which is a very interesting thing that he likes to to bring yeah that, that was that was an answer that I, I i couldn't picture coming in a million years so it was a, mm-hmm. me neither i didn't even know they <laughs> made those things uh, <laughs> yeah. inflatable you know i'm we're gonna leave it at that because you're gonna have to yeah. listen to that to yeah, the podcast man. to listen to it and yeah, and and we got a good, we had a good long chat with him. So we might as well, we might as well get to the to the meet as soon as possible. Shouldn't let's we? do it. And like always, you... remember that to 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 subscribe to our channel on YouTube, uh, Stand by Pod. Also follow us on social media and Instagram and and Twitter. And uh, always, uh, if you have any questions, send it to us. And just to remind the uh, you listeners that I uh, will will be performing in Washington D.C. on April. 9th and 10th at the arlington draft house so if you're over there if you're in the area get your tickets because i'll be there live yeah i should have checked when this podcast comes out because i'm gonna be at the venice underground on april 2nd but this might come out a day a couple days later or something oh, but well, um then. but yeah i, I can't <laughs> then, remember but, but yeah, then listen I, then, I, then, I, then. <laughs> Yeah, then then now it's too late i just played somewhere so too bad for you basically um let's do it let's get to uh you guys are gonna love it if you're already a fan of him you know exactly what to expect from this from the firebrand comedian larry dean and if you're not enjoy ladies and gentlemen here's our interview with it with larry dean that i actually just ran around my apartment in that time here we are we are sitting down with superstar stand-up comedian you guys will recognize him from all over your television sets we got larry dean in the house how you doing buddy yeah i'm good chip man i'm good thank you very much for thanks me. for joining us larry you know you're all the way it's what time is over there uh right uh, now uh, right, uh, 7 p.m right now 7 p.m right here is noon so you got yeah. a seven-hour start. You're already drinking. I saw that you had a. It was, is that a beer? I think. Or... No, no, it's it's Iron Brew. It's like a Scot. It's a Scottish uh, drink. It's, oh, uh, oh, what is it? It's, it's made called... from girders. I said, man. I said you can tell me soon. No, it's a uh, uh, basic. Scotland's the only country apart from North Korea that Coca-Cola is not the main soft drink. Okay. So our drink yeah. is Iron Brew. It's kind of it like looks like kind of look as a the. Um, I can never, people always ask me to describe the taste, but I can never actually describe the taste. It's just better than Coca-Cola. But it tastes like Coca-Cola. It has that same no, flavor. It's more, it's more in no. the Fanta, the Fanta family. It's like Fanta, but it tastes like it has metal in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much. Very much. 
Oh, so what I loved as well when you said about the time difference, I was thinking, I think anybody watching this can tell we're in different countries just looking at our complexion difference. <laughs> uh, you're like, you're very, you're like so pale. Then it comes JJ, who's been in LA for a while, and then just me. Yeah. I was well, born I... in Venezuela, so I have, and this is pale for me right now. Like, yeah. I... <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, this is pale yeah. for me right now. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's just pale it's, for me. I'm usually see through. <laughs> there you go. That's a natural color of a Scotsman, isn't it? I mean, this is the most pale I've been since I left Britain. I was enjoying Los Angeles for the sunshine, but quarantine hasn't really given me the motivation to be out as much. So, well, I was on the yeah. phone to you the other day trying to motivate you to get out of the house. You were just like, oh, I should probably get out of the house. At the moment. I'm like, I'm like, mate, it's yeah. like it's so sunny outside. All right uh, today in Scotland, it's, uh, in Glasgow, it's like seven degrees. And Ooh. you're going, oh, I don't know if I should go out. It's only like, well, I don't know Fahrenheit, <laughs> Fahrenheit wise, I can never get my head around. But I, I couldn't believe I was having to convince you to leave the house. <laughs> well, I'll have you know that I did. I did leave the house. It's it's all right once you get out there. But man, I don't know. Do you guys, I, I saw that Francisco was at the park today as well. So maybe yeah. you guys yesterday, have more motivation. Yesterday. Oh, was that yesterday? But yes. you sneakily, you only put the photo up this morning so that people don't know. That's no, I posted story. it yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Uh, I, oh, I, I, I think you're still on the one hour delay. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I was yesterday, yeah, I, I posted thought. yesterday. No, but uh, I think we should uh, quickly introduce our good uh, our good guest here just to give it, you know, I, I like, I, I always like to give uh, even people, because you said, hey, just say my name, but I think we need to give you credit so people that the few people that are don't know who you are this know who you are do. and start to get your and become your huge fan base. Uh, so just want to quickly, I'm just reading off your uh, biography here. You uh, you were crowned a Scottish comedian of the year when you were 23, which was that's pretty awesome. So you started comedy very young, right? Like uh, yeah, I started around about like the age of 20. Like I did gigs when I was 18, but then you know when you only do like five gigs in a year and you can yeah. think, why am I'm I not comic? Yeah. Why it's am like... I not? <laughs> and <laughs> then uh, I started doing it five days a week after that. Wow. So and then you and then also you made your in 2015 you made your debut in the Edinburgh uh French show. It's called Out Now, uh, which was uh received Critical acclaim and a nomination for the Foster's Comedy Award for Best Newcomer. Uh, and then you also went to, in 2016, you were invited to uh, Laugh Out Loud with Kevin Hart on Montreal Just for Laugh, uh, which was two years after I went or before I went, which sucks because we could have met over there. And then well, you've been to the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Also, um, then you have a new show in, in 2018, Bampot on Edinburgh French. And also you've been on Live at the Apollo BBC's. Michael McIntyre's Big Show, Mock the Week, and Comedy Central's UK's Roast Battle. So you done well. So yeah, you have a huge, huge, huge resume. So thank you for joining us. Uh, thank thank and... you. This is can I just point? This is like the most. This is the cultural difference between America and the UK. Yeah, I know oh. that's my instincts too. I didn't know he was going to oh. read your Wikipedia. Oh man, no. uh, <laughs> I know. I, know. <laughs> I like to make you. Uh, I mean, I, I gotta give props to people. I mean, I know I'm the same way as comics. We don't. We never want to be like. Uh, just say whatever, you know. Like just say like. I got, when, I got when I, on you. Podcast. I think people. You know. I think we have more time to. Oh no, I appreciate that. it, man. But it's <laughs> honestly. I mean, you could call me any swear word under the sun, and <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more comfortable hearing that I'm a, I'm horrible or whatever than hearing that <laughs> you just. Yeah. It's yeah, like, it's brain, 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 thing Francisco, uh, I'll tell you right now, Francisco, like at the beginning when I said, he's fantastic stand up and you recognize him from your television, that still embarrassed him. So, <laughs> and, then, and then two minutes later, we read out his Wikipedia. Well, that's, stuff right now, so he's like, I oh. think that's every comic. I feel weird when people give my credits. I feel weird. I was like, ah, just yeah. let's just talk. It's just, I, I think that's a comic. Thing. I, this is a thing, right? That, uh, that I've heard a few stories about in the. Uh, in the UK of American stand-ups or stand-ups that have started in America coming to the UK and saying to the host, going, hey, can you read out my yeah. like, credentials before I come on stage? And immediately the, the UK audience hate them. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's like, oh you think you're better yeah. than us? That's uh, the way that we look at it. So, like, so, what, so when you bring somebody up, like like let's say we're in a uh, performing over there, and like and I'm like and I ask you, hey, I'm I'm bringing you up, like you're coming after me. Do I do I just say your name, or do I say like quite one little quick credit, or just he, your name? He's a funny no, guy. 
Yes, your name. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I just see the funny. Usually, I don't even see the funny because I don't. Yeah, want... I don't like the funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this, I like. This I guy get, is like, great. I love him. I, I used to He's get when I started. Friend. It's like the handsome yeah. comic or the like the good looking. It's like ladies. Ugh. Well, I was like, no, nah, don't say that. It's so annoying because then you gotta like, <laughs> they're already judge like the the crowd already judges you, and then you and they already you're giving them like a little seed for you to like oh yeah why are you why why are you dressed like that it's like now make me laugh it's like ah just say yeah yeah. so it is better introduce somebody as the handsome comic they've got to like you'll have to have like a wink at the beginning i know i have to (laughs) that's what i do i just i've i've seen it for five minutes for five minutes just just don't say anything just wink for five minutes yeah I've seen a few of these nasty deaths. Like at the comedy store in London, there was an American visiting comic in particular. And when they asked about like music or intro stuff, every British comic, they say a song. They'll say, you know, I want to come on to Paradise City by Guns N' Roses. Cool. And they got to the American guy and the American guy was like, can you tell them that I was on Letterman twice and I've I've written for Leno and I was in a commercial for Subway or whatever. (laughs) And and it just, you just die. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, here... Here you have to do it like it's fine if you give like one thing like you're trying like you say you're gonna you know you're gonna be on jail in you know a month so something like that like one thing but if there's some comics that they give you this whole like paragraph thing like that's too much like that's where I I'd be like all right just give me one thing like you don't we don't need to give your whole bio thing but like but here in America we do like one credit you know like oh you see him in Comedy Central give it up you know for JJ okay. you know. Sometimes even though when you've got a credit, like you know, people will like you like look it up on YouTube or anything or something like that. You kind of what I say to them go, Oh no, don't don't look that one up on YouTube. I don't like that clip or uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the worst I- is when they when the clubs, I don't know if it happens to you, like whenever you get booked in a club or something, like they always use for me, like they always use the the first headshot I ever got. I don't know. It's like in the in the universe of Google, and it's like, and I send them like, "Hey, this is a new one," and they still use the old, like the new, like the first one I use. I'm like, "Come on, yeah, stop using that though? stupid headshot." Like a lot of what? How old is it? How many years ago was that headshot? Oh, like 10, 11 years. You know, when I started. You know, like the first one when I. So it's like you could tell the the so difference. That when you were the handsome yeah. comic. That That's right? when I was the handsome comic. That was. <laughs> oh, I was like, the, the young, the young handsome. Nah, nah, nah. Now nah, it's just been a couple of years where it's like, now nah, it's just it's just a comic. I think. <laughs> <a comic. laughs> I don't know why, because I've had the same thing, and it's usually it's there's one of me a few years ago of like I did this mad lean thing. When I lean back, uh-huh. and then um, I'm the I always it's the kind of thing I usually do anyway. I do this lean, right? And, and but then I, I'm a bit like, yeah, but I think the audience is now kind of like the, even with that picture, they now zoom in on just <laughs> me leaning, and I'm a bit like the whole point is I'm leaning in that photo, but they've just gone up in the face. Yeah, <laughs> it makes yeah. it weird. Yeah. When I started, I put uh, so I didn't because you don't have any credits when you're a new comic. And so, I, and I was, I made a jokey kind of resume when I started in Scotland. I started in Scotland, I started at the stand and that was like my only credit. I was like, he's done five shows at the stand. He's, uh, d- he's done five Monday nights, but on my jokey resume, I said, he's a former professional wrestler. As I thought that would be really funny. <laughs> and then, and then like 10 years later, 10 years later, I was on a, doing an interview on BBC with that Terry Christian guy. And he goes, so what was it like being a professional wrestler? Oh and it took God. me forever to remember, like, oh, fuck, this is, that's old fake that's information. Funny. Yeah. Although, I, uh, mate, I was about to cringe, though, because I, I immediately dislike, <laughs> it's so bad, it's such a judgy thing, but I immediately dislike when I see a new act uh, put a quote on their poster from their mum. You know uh, when people go, yeah. oh, really funny, their uh, thing with his mum, and then you kind of go, everyone's done that joke before, but you don't want to, because it's a new act, you don't want to say, you know, why are you doing that joke that I did one time uh, when I started. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, well, I judge, I judge JJ at uh, the beginning, right, before I met him, because we have, like, the same manager, and he like, hey, you guys should meet when he moved in, and I was like, okay. <laughs> Went to a club, and I was like, he was about to go up, and I was like, you know, I judge by the way when he went out, like, because I was like, I hope it went well. I don't, no, no, I don't. yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm talking to you right still because, like, at least I, because to me, it's not like as a comic, we all know, like, it's not about killing right away or even killing. It's about 
okay, this person knows what they're doing, you know, like the way that mm. they handle, you know, the, 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 they're, they're confident and comfortable. And when he got up there and it was a big show, I think it was one of those, like, in, uh, uh, I forget, like, in a, I forget what it was, but it was, a, it was like a big show and he did good. And that was like, I, but before that I was like judging him. I was like, who's this guy? And like, and I was like, this is like an open micer, you know, but then he went up. I was like, oh, okay, cool. He, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Have okay. you guys looked back at like uh, your? Have you got like video footage of like your first ever uh, gigs? I I don't have. I have like few like not the first ever. I have like ones that I did like when I first started, but I, you know, but it's still bad, you know. Like I used to wear like the same shirt and like a like a, a bracelet, like a bracelet, like a leather bracelet, like I would wear it all the oh time. Oh my god! Why are you still was... doing that? That's great. No. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a like a fucking Power Ranger. I was like, "What do you like?" I, but it's like it's so dumb because as a as a young comic, you think it's like like that would give me some kind of power or some confidence, kind of like. And then yeah. you start going like, "What am, what am I doing?" Like, yeah, let me just I yeah. can wear whatever fuck you want. It has nothing to do with like your shirt, you know. Became a crutch, and then like that's why I get rid of it. But like, I do remember that. <laughs> oh, much. But then so I swear, man, sometimes in the you. Uh, the UK is different from when I've gigged overseas. Of uh, overseas, they don't tend to judge you as much on the what way you're dressed. In the UK, though, they majorly zone in on it. Oh, really? Like, yeah, because I've uh, I've worn like Hawaiian kind of shirts before on stage. Yeah, and, right. Uh, and, and they don't like that. No, I don't like that. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm right now I'm wearing a varsity jacket, and I'm already thinking, oh god, when I start gigging. Like uh, uh, in the UK again, I don't know if I'll be able to get away with that. So what American? do they look for? Yeah. Like, do, is it like you have to be cool, or like, or like, or or not too much? Like, you don't want to be too dressed up. It's like yeah, like, you don't want people. To, it's I think it's people in the UK are just so insecure. So if anybody comes across as confident, they hate them. Uh, <laughs> so you just have to, kind of, you have to just true. be comfortable in your own misery, and then that's, uh, like, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. level you're after. That is it. That would be a better intro if they if they go. This guy has failed at a marriage. His dog died <laughs> last week, and he doesn't pay his bills on time. Welcome to the stage. And then the first people will be like, "Yes, finally, yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody who sucks as much ass as us." <laughs> totally. That's, yeah, that's that'd that'd be such a great introduction. <laughs> that would be great. Next, if I'm ever hosting in Britain, or, or yeah, yeah, I would definitely start doing that instead. This guy, <laughs> this guy, this guy's terrible at life. <laughs> By the way, I think we should give a, a quick shout out to the people who are watching. Uh, Baldy3 says, It's Larry. That's, that's, that was his comment. And, then, uh, and he says, I uh, uh, love that Larry has a bunch of gremlins and a gizmo oh, yeah. behind him, which oh, is yeah. true. I didn't notice. Yeah, you have a lot of that. Uh, are you a big gremlins fan? Totally. I'm like totally ob obsessed uh, with I th I, It's odd, right? Because I've kind of got a bit of ADHD, right? And when you've got ADHD, you can have a thing called hyper focus. So I struggle to watch any uh, film because oh. I just kind of want to do something right. else. But if a film has something that's a creature in it, uh, then I'll pay attention. For some reason, small wow. creatures really. really? So, for instance, I've got oh, I've got the mirror side, right? So, basically, yeah. I've got the Grogu. Oh, Mandalorian. Yeah, because I can watch that. Also, uh. the mask and uh, <laughs> Aladdin and stuff, because it's kind of creature stuff. Uh. Like, oh, I'll pay way attention right. to that. It's so weird. But, uh, but, yeah, Gremlins is my all-time favorite film. I remember oh, watching right. Gremlins. I went to actually see Gremlins, like, last year in a drive through with my... Uh, girlfriend you know they had like a drive through because we couldn't go out because of quarantine so we went to a drive through and they were showing like old movies so we watched gremlins and uh and then um i was like, like one thing about it was that was like i was like watching it but then i could watch it on my phone i was like I, the drive through concept it kind of lost the feeling of what it was before because i'm going like well i can just watch this better in my phone like yeah, better right. quality and i'm like and then at the point i'm like i just basically sit in a parking lot watching gremlins in my phone you know instead of like like the actual yeah. drive through because i was like i don't, don't want to watch it there i guess it's better quality in my phone so exactly also what i find with drive through things is a bit like the novelty of it wears off very quickly yes so yes minutes, like yeah. the first 10 minutes like oh my god this is really yeah. cool and fuck, i'm in a car and then 10 minutes later like i'm in a car yes <laughs> like, yeah. I'm stuck Back in the 50s, 50s it was cool because there was nothing to do and that's the only time you could fuck you know like because you were from <laughs> your parents and but like now it's like yeah it's like wow i'm just in a car like we're in cars all the time it's like 
So they does we're lose. I have. felt that now. <laughs> we don't have drive through stuff in Scotland. It's not like, it's not a part of our, uh, well, it is with COVID that we have drive through stuff. But no, you have dogging. <laughs> What's that? You have dogging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, we just do it out in the cold. Like, <laughs> we just we just go out in the cold in the bushes. That's what it is. It's like, yeah, if you man. can get an erection while you're cold, then that shows you really fancy me. So nah, that, that's true. Like, yes. That is uh, true. Get an erection when you're cold. It's tough. Yeah, man. I um, heard. I heard. <laughs> So, Larry, buddy, um, I've briefed you on how this works. It's really straightforward. We're a simple podcast about travel and the arts, and that's why uh, we were dying to have you on here, because we know that you have experience in those two things. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to fire six questions at you quickly, and, well. and, and you can give us short answers if you can, and people in the chat can join in and, uh, and chat away, and we'll get to people in the chat. We'll get to your questions afterwards, but what we do is we get those answers from you, and then afterwards, we'll circle back and we'll dig deeper and we'll learn even more about Larry Dean. Are you cool with that, brother? Yeah, man. I've I always got a bit nervous before a quick fire question thing, but I'll uh, I'll <laughs> do my best. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll be fine. There's, yeah, yeah, they're there's, they're very easy questions. Yeah, Just there's pretend nothing... you're watching. Uh, um, this is Gizmo, how low my right? self esteem is, though, mate. I, this is how low my self esteem is. I'm answering questions about my life, and I'm still yeah. worried I'll get them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your intro. Give it up for Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, brother. Well, here's here's question number one. Um, what was the first big move of your comedy career? When did you when, when did you have to make the first big move? Uh, when I moved down to uh, England when I was 18, um, I moved to the very, very bottom of England, to Southampton. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I thought it would have been London, but all right, right on. Cool. Okay, all right. Go ahead, Francisco. Awesome. Uh, second question. Uh, what culture has the most difficulty with your accent? Uh, <laughs> uh, or, is this one of the or... questions you just struggle in, Francisco? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, that was actually JJ's idea of a question. I was, but, uh... I've, I've been really looking forward to this. Everybody always says this podcast is like Shaggy and Fez hosting a podcast, but Shaggy here has been looking forward to a Scotsman trying to communicate with a Venezuelan. I think this is the only <laughs> podcast in well, the I've world. Been watching, let me tell you, I think I think it doesn't now. I understand, like his accent, I I kind of understand it a lot because I've been watching with my girlfriend uh, the UK's Drag Race. So oh, like, man. so I I've, I've got into like, especially no. like, there's an actual there's two, uh, Scottish two ones, Scottish yeah. Laura's Cheney. Yeah. So I, like, uh, so I kind of like, so I I don't know. I think it's easier for me now that I've been watching it so long that I've been. Uh, Oh, understanding so, your accent I'm, more I'm, you know? I'm glad you got used to it um i think oh, i like answer in the, uh, the for the answer to the question i i can't place a single country on it every country i think it's an age group rather than a rather than a nationality oh, right. <laughs> mm. okay let's go to age what, group what, what is the age group you mean like was it like older people just going what yeah, it's, it's, it's it's more of a kind of I think it's more the baby boomer thing. I think younger people, maybe the younger people can understand me, but they just pretend that they can because they don't yeah. want to seem offensive. Nobody right. wants to say anything, so they go like, "Okay, cool." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've always said I've always said this about like uh, uh, like Americans and Australians that uh, I always think they're really friendly, but I'm not sure because I think that they just might be <laughs> smiling and nodding because they're just pretending. <laughs> yeah. to what I say, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a strong it happens theory. a lot, especially in LA with the industry. Yeah. Oh they yeah. Just now they're like, oh yeah, we're not gonna tell you anything, and they just, yeah. you know, they, they never want to say no to you, so they just nod and and they don't say anything. So it's like, did oh, I yeah. get the part? Did I book? Eh, eh. I was like, did yeah. I get it? I've, I've I've actually asked someone for directions uh, in California before, and they didn't know what I said. I could tell they didn't, but they just responded with "thank you" and what? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's how that is. <laughs> here's, your, here's your third question, brother. Um, is uh, straightforward. What kind of travel did you do as a kid for holidays, like with your family and stuff? Uh, I used to basically. Well, we used to all go in a car. Uh, yeah. And uh, eh, I know it's wild one. This one. <laughs> every comedian, every comedian with a sense of humor. It seems like their family holidays started crammed into a car. But yeah, go yeah. ahead, brother. It was five of us in a car, and we used to drive 
to Cornwall, so which is like the complete other end of the island of the UK. So it was like fucking right. that was like a twelve hour twelve hour car journey, and it was just oh. to go by this a, a, not, not a great place by the sea. So and it's just, Glasgow's about forty minutes from the sea anyway. <laughs> yeah. so it's not the weather's any better. Looking back, I thought that it's the most pointless holiday you can have. Yeah, I mean, Britain is an island. You can go. You can get to the sea if you go in any direction. You don't have to go on the longest one. Exactly. It's so bizarre. But also, the, the the weird thing about that holiday was though that it was a uh, it was the same time um where I have uh, well I had epilepsy because you can get epilepsy when you're growing up but then it goes away. Um, right. I used to have epilepsy and uh, that was during those holidays. Um, but I need to keep these quite answers short. Uh, but I'll tell you about the epilepsy. Well, yeah, let's t- let's talk everyone. about that. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, not about the epilepsy, just about oh, mate, it was not your answer really of a question. I, don't, don't worry about being offensive. It was really <laughs> uh, f- uh, Next question. Uh, what What is an essential or a sentimental item that you bring with you on the road? Uh, right, I'm like a robot when I go on the road. I just kind of, I wear the exact same stuff most days. Uh, like yeah. You wear so, a, a robe, you said? A robe? A robot. Robot. robot? It's like I kind of the way I kind of treat gigging and stuff is like. Uh, Wait, what's a robot? Ro- he's robotic ro- about how robot. he travels. Oh, oh god, I got a robot. It. Okay, um, I, I thought you bring a robot. I was like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Although Society's I, I, not there yet, but that would be. You fair. see what I did there? I just went into your accent just to try and like translate a robot. Yeah, yeah a robot. <laughs> yeah. And the um, but because I usually wear the same clothes every single time. Uh, and also, apparently, that's what Steve Jobs did, and like Albert yeah. Einstein. So, if you wear the same clothes every single day, apparently, you're going to be a success. Uh, <laughs> can, can, makes me think the homeless people have really underachieved. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> a lot of geniuses in LA right now. <laughs> but the, there was a phase I went through of uh, having to bring a squatty potty uh, oh, whenever okay. I went traveling. Wow, but that's a carry on. Right. Is that that's a big thing? Well, I will talk about that, but we're gonna, like, get, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see JJ's dead excited. <laughs> he's in a party. He's, he's actually in a squatty party right now. That's why. you know what? That's too much iron brew, man. <laughs> Way too much iron brew. You know? <laughs> your main, main essential is worried about when you have to do the shitting part of your travel. Um, but we'll get that's back what to travel that. Is. That's what travel is. Travel's all about what. <laughs> Nobody, and the, the other thing, I mean, obviously, I'm the same as everybody. Everybody worries about bringing, you, like, if you're traveling anywhere, you always bring about two times as many underpants you, you'd actually need. Like, the whole point of traveling is <laughs> yeah. the fear of shitting your pants. Yeah. <laughs> Baldi's chimed in in the chat here saying that I broke my toilet the other day, which is true. So, I guess. Oh, that's, glass- that's the guy that knew who I was. <laughs> glass, glass houses. Uh Hey buddy, the next question. The next question on our list is, uh, what is what's your what's your favorite recreational activity to do when you're on the road? What do you like to get up to in that spare time? I honestly just like going going to the supermarket in a different I, city. That I know it sounds you're probably the most boring comic you'll ever have on this show because usually <laughs> people will be talking about sniffing things or putting things in different orifices. But me, I like going to get a meal deal from the supermarket. Okay. I've had weird stories right. happen to me while traveling, but I've always like, yeah, but it wasn't as good as that time I got a meal deal for three pounds. It was great that day. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can get to know a lot about a city or a town uh, based on what is in the reduced to clear aisle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the almost expiration or expire items. Yeah, items. like, oh, like, nobody in this nobody in this town eats chicken nuggets. <laughs> Okay, our last question we have is that what is a tradition or custom from somewhere you visited that you love to introduce to Scotland? I mean, you can go the other way too. What do you, you could also, we're willing to hear if there's something that you Scots do that the rest of the world should, but you know, we've already touched yeah. on drink, drinking iron brew. So, uh, I would probably say American customer service. Mm, could, right. Yeah. That, the thing that freaks Americans out when they come over here, um, yes, is yeah. Like, yeah, why why is everybody really mean when I'm buying yeah. when I'm buying from them yeah. and they still they that look is, up like, that is true that is very American because even like when 
in Venezuela or South America or anything like that. It's like the the service industry is not it's not even pay that well. So that's why their service, you know, like people are don't care, you know, that much. If you're a waiter, it's like I'm not making that much. But here, like you could be like a literally professional waiter and and yeah, the difference is like yeah. crazy in service. Okay, you know? well, it's amazing because oh, so. they're really, really talented at well, they, they really care a lot when well, they come across yeah. it. You know? And like they actually remember you. Starbucks actually makes sure your name is correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was talking about this the other day, um, because when I first moved to Britain, I bartended. I was a waiter at the Balmoral Hotel in Scotland on Princess Street. My first job was a waiter at the Balmoral in Hadrian's restaurant, just down there on mm. Princess Street. And uh Canadians and Australians, they love employing us in Britain because a customer because we're all smile, we all come from a like a tipping, a kind culture, uh, where we're into hospitality and every time a british person was hired at the especially when i worked at this bar in london my last bar job in london british people lasted two english people would last two weeks and they hated it they hated serving people drinks or anything and they were out of there whereas canadians are just like hey man how you doing what can i get you you know see i I actually really like when i worked in hospitality i really liked it as well but then the people that are decent at hospitality end up just getting into performance because it's almost like, oh, you're good at pretending to like people that act. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. that's true. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Well, that brings us to the end of the questions. Now, if any of you guys have questions uh, who are watching at home, feel free to fill them up in the side there, and we'll get to them. Um, afterwards but let's uh circle back because i i was surprised the first question uh the first big move i thought it was going to be london because i thought that everybody in britain if you don't go to manchester you must go to london but yeah. that's really interesting that you went all you you went past london basically you you waved <laughs> in london on on your way to southampton Southampton, yeah, Southampton, then, uh, yeah, it was yeah. tonight. But then well, I didn't know if, like, when you see biggest, I was like, well, that's the furthest. Uh, but then, right, okay, yeah, uh, that's well, that makes sense. Oh, that's uh, yeah. Well, but then I thought, well, that was when I was eighteen, and I'd literally just left school, and I got and I failed most of my exams, <laughs> and a performance degree in Southampton that <laughs> I applied for, and I didn't even turn up to the interview, and I still got in. Not from <laughs> percentage. They just didn't have enough people to That's do that. So I, I just was like, all right, I'll go and do that then. Because uh, I wanted to try and get away as far from Glasgow as I could. And then you get a, like, I don't know if it's the same as the, the uh, in America, but you get like a loan. And then basically when you get your loan, uh, a lot of that money gets used for drinking. Uh, obviously, yeah. it probably is the same in America, to be fair. I've got a watch enough of your stuff um, on, uh, uh, on TV. But the... But when I, I just took that money from the student loan and then while I was doing the performing degree, I then started traveling up to London. So I was using that money mm. to travel up to London to do as many gigs as I possibly could. That's when I was like, tw- that was when I was 20. So the first two years I drank, the last the last couple of years <laughs> I was spending on trying to, to get decent at comedy. So I'd say it's probably the most effective use I've used on my of my yeah and and the, the, yeah. the degree was a, a performance degree like what kind of what was it or oh, what were you trying to get so fucking embarrassing right because <laughs> basically uh this is actually this is fine because it's an american uh it's an american podcast so you guys would be more supportive because if i mention yeah. this in the uk immediately then they're like oh we don't like you now um <laughs> but i did a, it was a degree in uh, comedy writing and performance oh okay, they, they okay. never they never had done one in the uk before hence why nobody wanted to do it yeah, and then when i did yeah. it i realized why nobody wanted to do it it was shit it was absolutely rubbish they didn't even yeah. teach like stand up or anything they just teach you about the history of comedy oh no. okay Ah, oh, okay. Well, so yeah, mean, you actually did it good, like grabbing that money and actually using to to do stand up, you know, because that's how you actually learn, you know. Yeah, like, if, you, know, you noticed though, like oh, the other people that did the course, like because people usually go, "Oh my god, who did the course?" Was it like you know, uh, did uh, what do you call it? Like these famous comedians did the course? Now, oh no, no, the other people in my year, one of them's now a bus driver, one of oh. them's now a chef. Uh, the other one works as a builder, <laughs> so, and then they all qualified in comedy. It's very strange. Uh, I'm the only one that did. Well, they know a lot of history. That bus driver knows a lot of comedy history when he's doing his route. He was so yeah. funny. So 
it, honest to God, he was so funny. And like, it's weird now that I'm like, you will definitely be the funniest bus driver. Uh, I never know. <laughs> but you'll never tell anyone about it. And how that far into how far into your career were you then? Because so you did a little bit in in Scotland and then went oh, down. So, oh I, no! So, I, you, so you literally started while you yeah. when you started your performance degree as well. Yeah, when I they, when I was twenty three, right. that's the first time I gigged in Scotland. <clears throat> I was mm. I was thinking about gigging in Scotland because I hadn't come out as gay and I was talking about right. gay stuff on stage and I thought if I get do it in Scotland, someone will. Like, uh, rat me out. Someone will tell my mum and dad. Mm. <laughs> so oh, I thought, right. I'll just do it in England because everyone's gay in England. So I thought I'll just do it. In <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, well, that, that's, that's really interesting because, I mean, that's the way I think a lot of people feel when they start in their comedy career. You don't want to start in front of people you know, let alone, yeah. and sometimes, like yourself, I didn't even start in front of a country that knew me because I started in Scotland. So I understand your move to England to go, okay, if I. <laughs> If I fail in front of these people, it doesn't fucking matter. I can go home. Yeah, it's great. But then yeah. did you, what did you, did you know you wanted to do comedy before you I, moved to Scotland? I did. I did know I wanted to do comedy, but I didn't know, I didn't know how great a comedy culture you guys had in Britain. So I just kind of stumbled onto that because I was just supposed to be backpacking and finding myself and all that kind of shit. I thought I had to go to Toronto. That's what I, I think that's what a lot of Canadians think. So, so it was a pleasant surprise. To be able to sneak away to another country and start. And for you, were you? Did you always wanted to do comedy? Or was that a thing? Like since you were little, or are you just kind of like? Uh, I did. I and I wasn't really gonna do it until basically my dad said I wasn't funny and uh, I wanted to prove <laughs> him wrong. Oh, <laughs> so <that's... laughs> literally a three-year degree and tens of thousands of pounds worth of debt. Just to try and prove my dad wrong. <laughs> That's going to stubborn. He's like, I'll show you. Boom. And then that is so better. So better. So bad. Is, is, is he supportive of your gay lifestyle, but not of your comedy lifestyle? Like, which one? <laughs> which one is your dad? It's your old school yeah. baby boomer, I'm assuming, dad. Like, uh, it's holding higher. I, t well, I told my dad I was going to do stand up, and he says, oh, it's just a phase. Um, mm. you, you'll eventually yeah. find the right job. <laughs> 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 that's hilarious yeah. that's funny man that was kind of like the same thing i mean he passed away so he never got to see me he never he wasn't like he wasn't like he wasn't supportive but he also gave me the whole like like especially the first six months that i moved to la he's like hey why don't you come back you know and i had uh, like the i had like the hallmark movie lifetime movie like you don't know me dad <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, this is what I do, man. Yeah. Oh, did you, did the gigs in Venezuela? No, no, I was, I, I grew up, I was born in Venezuela, but I moved to the U.S. when I was uh, 11, 12 to oh, right. Washington, D.C. Uh, area. And then, so I grew up there, went to uh, college there and everything. And then after I didn't like what I majored in, I, that's when I moved to L.A. to, to start doing stand-up, you know, but yeah. What did you major in? Finance and international business. So it was, <laughs> yeah, really, was very, really very, very, good. <laughs> very, very, very professional. And then I was like, yeah. oh, fuck, I don't. Yeah. And like, it was like, obviously, like, you could tell that I didn't like Because like, as a finance major, I took one of the careers that you make the less money when you start. Like, basically, you don't make right. any money when you start things. Like, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go work literally for free. And, you know, and, uh, but yeah, that's when I moved there, you know. To, I yeah, it's odd of like when you actually find out what if like if comedy had to finish tomorrow, it's I always, it's always interesting to find out what comedian what other what comedians could do. Yeah, what, what uh, they're actually qualified in. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah. I think like I guess for you, I mean, like you never you basically just have done comedy, right? Uh, I mean, you you never worked anything else, right? Uh, pretty much. Um, Oh, that, that makes it sound as if I arrived in like some kind of reed basket at the bottom <laughs> of a comedy club. Like, I will raise him to be a comedian. No, but that's uh, cool. But that's but that's what you mean. It's, it's like, yeah, well, what I, of, yeah, for, I, for me, it was the opposite. Thing, the only other thing I can do is, um, well, it's still performance based. It's kind of like voiceover -y kind of shit. Uh -huh. But the only proper job that I've had before uh, any performing thing was like, uh, it was cleaning toilets. So, all right, oh god, well, you can still do that. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty damn good at it, guys. I don't want to. I mean, that's one thing I'd brag about on stage now, man. I'm, I'm amazing at cleaning a toilet. Um, <laughs> good yeah. lord. You- that's is always it, a good skill to have. You know? Is this connected <laughs> to the Oh, the for Tesco trying to be really supportive of my toilet cleaning days. <laughs> <laughs> you can always get a job cleaning toilets. That's a good thing about it. It doesn't matter what, uh, especially if you have a, a squatty potty. Yeah, oh, I mean, I mean that this seems like a <laughs> seamless transition here. It brings us straight to the squatty potty, doesn't it? Because that's the next, the next question. No, the question was a. Uh, was a culture one. The What's the last? Oh, we no, we no, we're on the fourth question now, dude. We are. Yeah, we just did travel, right? Didn't we? No, I thought. Have, th- have I lost? Tra- have I yeah, lost? Are you, are you are you okay? Are you having have like I, a, have a, I, a, have I, aneurysm? It's <laughs> the toilet. Well, is it the toilet humor? That's is it the to- toilet thing that made me skip straight to squatty potty? Yeah, yeah, no, we. I think we were we were just still in the first question. Now the second question is: is what culture has the most difficulty with your accent? Which you said not culture, but more like an age range, like more older people, kind of like yeah. don't. Yeah, don't yeah. understand. And I, I, I it's uh, although English people really that find it difficult to understand, but so do it. So do Americans. Everybody does. It's so difficult to kind of go. Oh, it's just this one group of people. I tell you who does actually understand it really well is South Africans tend to understand mm. a Scottish accent really well. I think it's because <laughs> probably just because we're probably saying something really offensive and we <laughs> kind of make it up of like, oh, that sounds. They've got the faces they're saying that. But, they, um, but yeah, I, I find that that's that's that tends to be why I kind of end up doing accents because I have to kind of learn how to do accents mm. by kind of going, oh, well, I'll have to repeat back the. Um, there's one word and it's not usually like because usually people make a Scottish pe- pop uh, Scottish person say purple burglar alarm. Whoa. Uh, pur- purple burglar alarm. Oh right. wow. Because it's, does, it sounds weird in our voice. But the yeah. one thing I've always struggled with saying is Coke. When I say can I get a glass of Coke, it <laughs> it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like yeah. a soft drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds this like a hard a- drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is that. See, I think you and Francisco have that in common. Because I, I, if I had to think of when I first met Francisco, I remember the routine that you did, Francisco, about teaching tennis and asking children to focus. But yeah. of course, in Francisco's accent, he was saying to the parents, "Your kids won't fuck us." Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so I knew. That, yeah, I knew. I knew I would have my Venezuelan and Scotsman bonding well, over. Well, over it this. is true. I think I agree with you what you say because I think for me. Also, I think the older people, like they tend to not on, and I have to like slow it down, you know, like, so it's not like I change my accent, but I slow because I speak very fast if I don't realize it. If, so then I, 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 I have to tell myself to slow down. And then if it's an older crowd, then I'm like, oh yeah, I have to even slow it down more because like, that's the way for them to understand me. So I do agree with that. You don't find it really frustrating though when you have to, when you have to slow down of like, because it changes the pace of how you want to the yeah, be, yeah. and also it's difficult to look enthusiastic when because right. you're supposed to look enthusiastic, yeah. you're supposed to be enthusiastic when you're talking like this. Yeah, like, I it's true. Like, when I talk on stage, sometimes I sound like I'm trying to help an old lady get to the toilet. Like, don't <laughs> worry, it'll be fine. <laughs> like, just kind of yeah. the food. It's, so, it's, it's, it's also happened when like I've done shows and I'm like. You know, I start doing, I start going fast and I'm like, and they're not like getting me. So then I go like, oh, I tell myself, oh, I got to slow down. So then I get start slowing down, but then they still don't get me. And then I'm like, all right, I'm fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I'm fucking, guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to blame play. something. The amount of times I've died on my ass and I'd be like, they just don't get my accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, That's I, a good I, way I, for, for us to blame our our that the bit didn't work is more like oh, oh, yeah. it was the accent it was the accent. I know. Yeah, so just, we've never had a bad gig that's been our fault it's always of been course, the ignorance of, of the audience it's, it's never always been it's always number one rule is always the, the audience fault and <laughs> I, if you're gonna be a good comic you number one rule I'm this, cra- this cracks me up because because uh, that, that's the truth you guys slow down like for your accent or you're trying to help an audience but i i well i have an accent obviously but uh when I slow down, and I do sometimes, uh, like unconsciously, it's I just sound more stoned, basically. <laughs> but, I'm, 
but I'm guilty of losing the audience too. If I'm not thinking about like, keep the pace up. Come on, keep yeah. it going, Jay. And if I just really slow down, my, my material takes an extra 10 minutes to get through. And I have to realize, oh yeah, they all think I'm baked out of my mind right now. Yeah. I better yeah. start fucking talking. Although JJ, what age, right? Cause when you said before that you went on a gap year, I did yeah. in my head and I thought, I don't know if I can, it's a bit mean, but I was going to say, you look as if, uh, you look, you have the look of someone that's always on a gap. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that is basically what happened was I went to Ed, Edinburgh. I moved to Edinburgh in 98 and told my parents. I, so it was 98. I moved to Edinburgh in 98 and told my parents, I'm going to find myself. And I organized a little adventure. And then I stayed in Britain for 15 years. So I, I pretty much was on an extended gap year. And now I've moved to LA. And yeah, I mean, the, the hair has the hair isn't just long because of quarantine. It, ha it happens that I, yeah, I think I've been on my rum springer for a good 20 years now. Well, did you, like, so JD, did you look like you did drugs? before you did drugs <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah well, you was... cast it before you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I think it was a destiny man i think it was a uh, yeah it was did you look as if you've been like made at a music festival because <laughs> he wore dreads he wore dreads and being wearing dreads i did during, I had dreads the, during the late 90s that's a very big statement no, I dreads you know. was in the late two thousands. That wasn't well. The, still, was, that's a very was, that's a very. Uh... I was a student in the late nineties, and then I had to have short hair in Edinburgh. I had to, you have to have short hair to work at the Balmoral Hotel because it's a black tie five star hotel. Like a set performer. So, so no, no, I was a waiter at the Balmoral oh. Hotel at like this place called Hadrian's Restaurant, but it's a big five star hotel. So you have to have bow tie and short hair. So I did have short hair, but I was dying to break away from the constraints of society. You know, which I was able to do when I started doing stand up. And then I was like, nobody's, I don't have to listen to anybody anymore. I think I'll get dreadlocks now. Oh, cool. <laughs> what a turn. And, and, that's when their and that's when their parents went like, well, he found himself. <laughs> yeah, no, they, yeah they, no, they weren't quite there. It wasn't until my second or third year of stand up that I had the job. But I had long hair as soon as I could, as soon as I didn't need a job in stand up, I had the long hair. And stuff. So, because I, I love that. I love him. Like that's the that's the best answer to why did you get into comedy for the haircut? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I can have long hair. It's yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every everybody's got their. That's dreams. like getting a tattoo in your neck and be like, yeah, this is. I'm I'm into you know security or going to work in a bar or a musician yeah. or or an artist or a two two uh, artist tattoo artist or because well, it's hard to be a. Although, yeah, yeah. That, maybe well, that's thing yeah. as well because neck tattoos in the UK. If I see someone with a neck tattoo, I now associate with you're bisexual. That's oh, honestly, really? that's honestly yeah. yeah. It tends oh, to be. Yeah. What's it called? I don't know what it is, but you know, you always get those kind of like you, you come up with a like a association. Why is that? Why 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 is that? Is no, that no, like... I, just, I think it must have been like a um or like either gay or bisexual, I'd say, like just basically not not the the what's it called uh, uh, heterosexual, but I think there was like a like there was a a fashion of getting like uh, tattoos going up your neck, like star oh, tattoos okay, in okay, the okay. UK. But back oh, in no. like I think that was more back in like you kind know, of Britney Spears's like uh, uh, yeah. when she burst on the scene. So like it tends to be like forty year old gay guys uh, actually, like, yeah. that going up there. It's so odd. Oh, as soon as I see a neck tattoo, I'm like, you're. It's kind of similar, mind. like when I was young, like the eerie stuff. Remember that? Yeah, you know, was supposed to be like. Like I growing up was like left or right, like whatever you were wearing. Oh, yeah. it, you know, yeah, like well. so you Yeah, yeah, I think that was means you're straight. I think, the right one means Yeah, you're I don't remember yeah what it was, but like that was like a thin, but now it's like doesn't matter. Like that, that that's gone, right? Like exactly. yeah. if, you were, if you were an eating on either whatever. Either. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't see anybody. I used. I used to love when uh, when guys would have like one one earring. I, mm -hmm, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think because a lot of the, like the thing that would be your type or like something that you would find attractive in another person. I always think can usually can root back to when you first started finding people attractive. Like so, mm. oh. I mean, back in the back in like when I was like going through puberty and all that. And uh, I don't know. I'm getting off. <laughs> Get all sent back when I go through puberty. <laughs> um, people used to have the one earring thing, um, and I think that's a thing. When I see it now, I'm like, oh, that's nice. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. That's don't true. do that face, though. That'd be fucking all going, oh, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny that we talk about, like, neck tattoos and stuff it's because cause that was another thing. When I got this tattoo, so I got this was another gift to myself when I started as a professional comedian. And it, so it's immediate. It was it's visible. And pe- so that would be 2001 or, or like when I started to. What is it, by the way? Uh, Oh, it's just a rock and roll emblem and some Hell's Angels wings and stuff. Well, not Hell's Angels. It's actually the wings are. I I don't know if I should. Yeah, let's go with Hell's Angels wings. I used to draw it a lot as a kid, but basically it's a rock emblem. But getting it visibly, even on my arm in 2001, there was a lot of people going, "Well, you won't get a job now. You're not going to be able to be a you know bar staff or anything like that anymore." And I was like, "Fucking good, good. It'll force me to be a comedian." But then society's moved on, and these have yeah. become no no big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's onto your neck and everything. So yeah, that doesn't matter. For a, like a dish, because when I've got two, I only got I've got two tattoos, and only got them in the past year. And I thought I don't want to get any on my arms, uh, because of addition things. And I'm right. like, but then do you, do you not have that thing as well? Do you think you know? I bet, just in case I've got an audition tape to do, I don't want them to see a tattoo. I would. I mean, I, I don't have a tattoo, but that's my mindset. To think. Yeah. That's why I I never got a tattoo in that sense because I was like, oh, yeah, I want to be able to play parts that I can do whatever, you know, like, so that's my plan, you know, in terms of like, but, you know, I don't know, yeah. AJ. You know, like, no, I, 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 definitely, I definitely think of it, like, uh, if if I forget, but if I'm about to do an audition or something um like a a tape at home if i go to an audition live and i realize i've forgotten to bring a long sleeve shirt i'm like fuck it i'll just have to confidence my way through it i'm sure it's it's easy enough to cover up but uh at home like i just did an audition the other day and i consciously was like okay i'll I'll put sleeves on you know so so yeah i'm conscious of it which is which is weird at at the end of it it's it's not a big deal but i think at the end of the day it's like for audition purposes only. I think you do give the first impression that we see is what you get. So it's like, could be your hair, like JJ, like, you know, if you're auditioning for the CFO and you have your hair like that, <laughs> it's hard, like, it's very unlikely that you're gonna get the part, you know what I yeah. mean? And that's because, you know, you yeah. have that hair, you know what I mean? Like me and Larry have a better chance of getting the, the CFO part just because because we have the more I guess conservative haircut, you know, which you know. Oh, yeah. you see that? Actually, they're looking. They're looking for a handsome comedian to be on a. On a- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get in my BBC uh, roles. I want to get my BBC roles. Which, by yeah, the way, I- how many channels are in B? Because every time I see like British television, it's like, like how many BBCs are there? So it's uh, like, is it, I don't get it. It's like so. It's one channel that owns a lot of BBCs. No, like, there's three channels, uh, okay. and there's also, uh, there's also radio. Satellite. So you got BBC Radio One, BBC Radio Two, Three, Four. I think there's only four radios, and but also they have like BBC Sport, which is also another type of radio thing. I think they've just got pretty much. So it's a whole monopoly of like pretty uh, much guy. Um, oh yeah. If you want to check, because they have to get a TV license in Britain. So everybody, if you want to, I mean, you can watch TV for free, but you're supposed to buy a TV license, Francisco, in order to be allowed to be watching TV. And that TV license goes to the BBC, basically. And so oh. that's and and BBC One and BBC Two have no commercials. Do they? I they did last time I was there. I assume it's still like that because yeah. of all these licenses that everybody's supposed to buy. Mm. And then yeah, and then the other terrestrial because they don't have many channels uh, terrestrially, but the other ones have commercials to pay you know to pay the bills. But yeah, that's how the BBC works, man. It's the it's the national it's the British Broadcasting Corporation. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And we don't. It doesn't really happen here in America. Yeah, it's, here's. You know, like, so, I mean, it started with the whole networks, the big networks, but now it's like with the streaming and cables, it's like whatever. Yeah. It's like you can put anything, you know, it's I whatever. Can't, I can't watch much on YouTube now without having like the YouTube premium thing. I can't yeah. do that box anymore. I'm just yeah. right, I'll give there, Baldi's just texted in uh, on the side. The detector vans will get you. That is the oh, fear, yeah. and, that, and that is terrifying <laughs> when you're new to Britain. Because when I when I was new to Britain, and I'm you know, I started in Edinburgh, but you know, I'm I'm on a budget. I'm kind of live, still living a student lifestyle and stuff. 
And I was scared every time I turned the TV on because, of course, I hadn't bought the the eighty pound license yet or whatever it was. And the and it's a real fear. But but as you as you grow into Britain and you're there for longer, you start to realize, oh, it's all bullshit. They're mm. not. Fun. They're not well, going to catch I'm no, me. I'm no fear that this fucking podcast is going to be played in court, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Right. I think yeah. they're going to get back, back licenses from me. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, this, is, this is obviously all a joke. We've always paid our TV licenses. <laughs> yes, yes, we're just carrying on. Of course, I don't know. I don't. I don't owe, owe any governmental institution anything. Okay, uh, I think we should next uh, move on to the next question because I think we um we went. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in the deep end and another one. Yeah, we don't want to get. But the next question was, uh, what kind of travel you did as a kid for family holidays? You said uh, you went uh, 12-hour drive closer to the beach where, like, you lived, like, 40 minutes from your house, right? So, <laughs> yeah. but I think that's a very – we've seen, like, we uh, interviewed some already some uh, several comics, and I think that's the, the norm, like, when you were, like, with parents. It's kind of like – well, the, the the holiday will be just to get in a car with your with everybody in the family and drive for hours. And I think it's just the parents just like punishing us to be like, well, you guys are fucking assholes, and we're gonna drive the longest. I don't know. I mean, it seems like it's a it's a it's always the same theme. You know, I did the same thing too. My parents were the drive was like always like five hours when we need, need to go five hours for. And it's a, and it's a five person family. You said, Larry. So yeah. two, uh, bro- so what do you uh, uh, two siblings then? Yeah, I assume uh, a yeah. brother and a sister. Big brother, little sister. Big brother and little sister crammed into a yeah. car for twelve hours. Good times. Oh <laughs> man, it was it was such a nightmare. Although, right, so when I was gonna, did I, I mentioned the epilepsy thing before, didn't I? Yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. mentioned that. So. Cool. So I had like I had epilepsy when we were doing these uh, uh, journeys, right, and. One of the things I'd always get is I'd always get an epileptic fit if I was traveling. So if I was ever on a plane oh. or I was ever on, in a car or whatever, and I fall, fall, it'd always be as well when I fall, fell asleep. But I always fall asleep when I'm moving anyway. So uh, I would wake up and have an epileptic fit as soon as I woke up, right? But then my mom, it, when you have an epileptic fit, you don't tend to make that much noise, like not... It's not going to be louder than the, the sound of the yeah. road especially in a car right. like 15 years ago. So my parents could never hear me. So I had to figure out this system of, if I'm having an epileptic fit, I can still move my back, right? So I can still like move like that. So what I would do is I would just have the fit and I would in, turn over to my sister, who was a, like a toddler at the time, and just try and scare <laughs> <laughs> she must be traumatized by this of just having my face up next to her having this fit she would scream then my parents would know uh, I was having an epileptic fit oh and wow I actually uh, when you when I mentioned this I was like shit I've never apologized for that like she, <laughs> still she doesn't like traveling and I'm thinking it might actually be some trauma from having yeah. a guy well, with an epileptic fit coming up to her yeah, but well, at the, same, at the same time as apologizing to her, you could also thank her because she's technically the alarm that was helping you. So you're like, <laughs> yes. I have to apologize, but thank you very much because every time you alerted mom and dad, she so. was the original Siri. She was like, yeah, was al- she was she was my whimsical. She was my little yeah. medical bracelet. Alarm. She was what you call? It was so odd thinking of that was that was the case. But then, uh, but then I was I was. Uh, because everyone's like, oh my god, must because uh, everyone's been so sympathetic to me, and I thought, no, it's quite, it's quite funny. I get to scare the shit out of my sister. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and you don't have it anymore. Life. You don't have it. Uh, no, uh, no. So no. when uh, it was like a phase. Yeah, yeah, it was just just a phase. Uh, it was yeah, a phase. But, exactly. Yeah, phase. exactly. But my dad thought I was just gay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Then why else would your wrists be flapping around? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, because I, I mean, I had asthma too when I was little, like when I was like, yeah, like five, seven or eight, but then it kind of went away too. So I had a asthma face as well. Well, so what, right. when you're like going through, like when you're growing, what age were you when you had that? Yeah, I get, I think like six, seven, eight, you know, like I remember like I had to, you know, I had, I, I was hospitalized because of it. I had to wear, uh, you know, use a inhaler, you know, like couldn't breathe. But then it just, Remember that one of the actors said to my mom, it's like, yeah, the more he does, you know, sports, it'll go away. And it did. 
So I don't know what kind of doctor was that, or like he just like, I I think he just said that just to like, as a bullshit thing, and then yeah, yeah, it, it actually that. worked, and he's like, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> we don't need to see him anymore. It's so bullshit. Eh? That's like going to someone with COVID, going struggling, struggling breathing <laughs> for a run. Actually, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the opposite of what you should be doing. And he's like, yeah, you should do it. So, but yeah, I also would suffer from that. But then yeah, I didn't. So. Luckily, I don't have to do that anymore. I can't remember even the last time I had like uh, uh, an epileptic fit. Oh, actually, no, I had one when I was. Uh, this will get me in trouble. The authorities, because uh, there's a law that you're not allowed to have a uh, epileptic fit for seven years. What do you mean a law? Uh, uh, oh, seven years until you can get a driving license. Because obviously, oh, you don't, okay. you don't I thought it was a law against having epilepsy. I was like, yeah, that's, that's, what, I thought, that's <laughs> what I thought you were saying. Uh, right? you're, you're, going, going, you're going to jail. It's like, that's why? the with talking slowly. When you talk slowly, people yeah. think you've already finished. Ah, uh, uh, you've already had your epileptic fit for the current <laughs> seven years. So we don't want that again. Um, but yeah, so I, I think I had one when I was like 17. And then when I had one when I was 17, I lied because I wanted to get my driving license. Yeah. No, of course. That makes right. sense. But you're good. Um, I've seen it. Got, oh, I've gone blurry. Hold on. I need, there so, we are. Yeah, so yeah. now we've arrived. What, what I did earlier was I flipped my paper too, er, too early. So now we've, now we've arrived at the yeah. question that I, that I mistakenly skipped ahead to. But uh, when we asked you about essential travel items, this is funny because I travel like a robot as well. And Francisco and I have had this debate before because I've told him how minimal I'm very minimalistic when I travel to do gigs. Um, and uh, so I thought that was interesting that you've given that you're like a robot. You just minimal clothes. Like, I don't even want to carry on that I have to put overhead. I My bag, I have a bag that I keep as a carry on, you know, as long as the gig is under three, four days, you know, and that's that's enough to be efficient and travel. But I'm dying to know why you were carrying a squatty potty with you for a period. Which, by the way, are you checking this? Or is this like you're, you're bringing yeah. this in carry-on yeah. or like people are watching you carry the ca squatty so, potty uh, in the plane? No, basically, uh, it's those... Uh, I had to go to the uh, the doctor. Fuck! I, I realized. Well, I've already just talked about epilepsy. Now I'm going to talk about this. It's going to sound like I'm falling apart. Especially <laughs> my face is broken. But yeah, basically, I was at the doctor's uh, because I had uh, like bad problems uh, with going to the toilet. Uh, so like IBS kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> sorry if I'm grossing anybody out. <laughs> Uh, but my doctor was like, well, you need, you're not actually sitting correctly on the toilet. Nobody does. You need a squatty potty, which if you don't know who's watching, is that you put your feet up mm -hmm. and yeah. it's be more at an angle. Uh, and more at an angle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then um, when I'm surprised I, uh, your doctor wasn't saying it's all this bending backwards you do in your photos. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all like you're... You're wreaking havoc on your on your spine and gut. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he said to me, he said you're doing the, you're having the toilet the wrong way around. So I started like uh, <laughs> I started facing the facing <laughs> facing the wall when I pooed. Um, but then uh, he was like, "Gotta get a squatty potty." Um, he didn't say that. Like, we've gotta get a squatty potty. <laughs> uh, uh, but then I was like, I'm always traveling, so you can actually buy inflatable ones. <laughs> I swear. So before I used to go to the toilet, like uh, when I was staying away for a couple of days, I would, you just, I can't even imagine how weird it must have sounded in a public place of someone in the toilet and you hear someone blowing it up going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that guy's really struggling right now. You okay in there, mate? Yeah, just yeah, get yeah. ready to no, have I'm a shit. Gonna... <laughs> Bro, wait, but how long does it? I mean, how long? Because also, like, if you really need to go, like, how long does it take to 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 inflate the body body? Or is that, is that a pretty quick? A few. It might take you a bit longer because you're asthma, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it only took a few, like, a few minutes. But then, but you know, when you inflate like anything, like a uh, like a what do you call it, like a lilo, or uh, do you call them lilos? Um, the a, a waiting pool, a, like a waiting pool kind of thing. Is that that's a lilo, right? Is no, a lilo is the, the lilo. thing you lie on in a swimming pool. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, like oh, the uh, yeah, the the fence. I don't know what the, um, what's the name now. Inflatable like, mattress thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, inflatable mattress. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, well, yeah, it's that's kind of what it is, isn't it? 
Uh, oh yeah, the amount of the amount of heroin addicts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you don't find the you, you when you blow that uh, when you blow up anything, your face just goes all red and yeah. your ears are popping and all that. But and then you gotta that, take a shit. Yeah, and then you're just like it's basically every orifice is doing its best yeah. to keep you going. <laughs> So I that was uh, that's probably the weirdest thing I ever had to like bring to gigs. I've actually never told anybody that as well. So it's like you guys, are, you guys are my first. I mean, this nice. is like we're breaking news here. Yeah, we yeah, try to get, we try to get those unique questions that everybody wants answered. <laughs> well, that's that's good. I think that's uh, yeah, that's, uh, it is it is an essential item. And do you still use it, or are you not using it anymore, or do you uh, use it? No, I kind of I started like I've started finding other ways to. Um, to what you to call use. It? yeah to use yeah i just don't go to the toilet anymore i've given up <laughs> <laughs> you're like forget it i can't <laughs> cool, but you can always find things of like usually you know in a, in a like toilet a, like a bible from the hotels or something yeah. you know? <laughs> i just, you just don't just them up <laughs> but then you know you find that you always got a bin in the toilet so you just put your feet on the bin yeah you put yeah, yeah, yeah. there's ways yeah. to there's ways you can uh imagine yourself to so you yeah, can, I, I still you gotta buy provide. one of those. I still gotta buy one of those. You know, I don't have one. Oh, uh, wait, get the inflatable. And also, I, the funny thing of when someone asks you what it is, and you just have to go, "Oh, it's a travel pillow." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's perfect. Wow, you, why are you getting inflated? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question we had is like, what was your favorite recreational activity while on the road? And you said to go to the, in, in the supermarkets in each city that you yeah, like, you love crazy. going there. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like about doing nothing. Because I during when you gig, you it's, you you get obviously so much more tired than anyone would expect you to get. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of like hanging about in a hotel. It's still it's fun hanging out in a hotel room. I go mm -hmm. out drinking sometimes. It depends on who. Who's there? Because you know when you get booked in a lineup and you're like, oh, this lineup's brilliant. Like it's got all my all the fun people to uh, like. Because me and me and JJ, we went out for we, we went did. out before and uh, we Brighton. were in we were in Brighton. We had a good we had a nice day in Brighton, didn't we? Or a couple of days. Well, we had yeah. we were, the full weekend. We were at the Comedia, but yeah, I I we still got the photos. We got very reminiscent oh, yeah. photos. I think it was because this would be 2019, and uh, it was before the world shut down. So it's so it was a yeah we had a lovely day didn't we? Oh, so I remember what you said about the photos. You were like, I need to get more photos for Instagram, but don't get freaked out if I start posting these over the year because uh, I don't take photos someday. So some days I'll need to just post a picture of me and you in Brighton, and people will just have to think that I was in Brighton <laughs> that day. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, and you're uh, yeah. like, okay, nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks I, for letting me know that. <laughs> I still apply that logic in that. Uh, the reason why I do that, I probably told you that, because I did that with uh, when we were working in Hawaii as well. I, I post them afterwards. I don't want people to know when I'm not home. Even though I was in, I was in the middle of a tour in Britain, but I don't, I don't like posting things at the moment it happens. Cause I don't know my, well, we got burgled in Manchester, didn't we? And I feel like we got burgled in Manchester because people were watching when three comedians, they were watching when we would leave the house. They thought we were drug dealers, but they were watching us leave the house. And now Instagram is like telling people like, Hey, look, I'm clearly not home right now. Yeah. Ha have at it. So that's, so that's why I fuck around and I put things up when, yeah when uh, uh like out of the timeline anyway that's my st strategy <laughs> I, know, but I i don't i don't think i've ever seen a comedian and thought oh i'd love to rob their house they look as if they've got a lot of money yeah 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 <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <what's> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't think people are on, on one of them like okay jj's out of his apartment let's go go yeah yeah, yeah. ocean's <laughs> 11 just to get just to break into his apartment it's like you just see the fucking like, all right. So I could go with a businessman that's just ordered a picture of him out with his Porsche, or I could go for the guy waiting on a bus to get to a gig. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do we steal I, the the F, the the Federal Reserve or go to JJ's one bedroom apartment? All right. Yeah. I <laughs> what was stolen then, JJ? What what was stolen from you? What when we got? Well, see, we got. <laughs> Comics get burgled more than you'd think, but uh, well, it was quite violent when it was. Uh, it, but I wasn't home in Manchester, but that was Jim Jeffries and Steve Hughes. But they got it was kidnapping charges as well, you know, because they got tied up and shit. 
Um, so I, that was, but those. I never heard, never heard about this. That's so. Uh, weird. Have you not heard about this? Yeah, it was like two. We were living in Manchester, so it was probably about two thousand and six. I'm gonna no, maybe two thousand five. Um. So yeah, th- but it was. But those guys thought that we were drug dealers because they just thought they saw us leaving every weekend, you know, with a with a suitcase or whatever, and they thought, oh, there's there's gonna be drugs and drug money in this house. And they uh, broke in, and there was DVDs. <laughs> that's a, that's a, d- porn DVDs, and well, there was drug. They got an extra two years for drugs that that were originally ours. Anyway, when they got caught, they got ten years and twelve years with two years extra for drug possession, with the how drugs did, that they did take. How did they? How did they catch them? If the uh, th- they caught them because they ran a curb, and the police thought it was a drunk driver, and in the so th- and then they started pursuing them. And in the meantime, Steve Hughes and Jim Jeffries broke out of their restraints and called the cops. And when they called the cops, uh, Jim was able to go. They took off in my car. And so and then the cops realized, oh, we're already in pursuit of this car. So wow. right. um, that's, that's how they caught them. And Where I was in, I was in Australia at the time. I was on. Oh, OK, I but you were taking pictures like, hey. I'm by the house. Yeah, yeah. You want to come over? And that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. fucked it up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, you should have seen her in Australia. You know, like. Yeah, I learned my lesson there. Yeah, but the uh, same thing happened with uh, uh, Dougie Dunlop. I live with uh, the comedians uh, James Dadswell, Dougie Dunlop. When I first moved from Scotland down to London, we lived in Leighton, and our place there got burgled, and we truly had nothing. That was that was honestly baffling. Like what you guys are saying, like they would break in. And I think like Dougie Dunlop had a whole bunch of like '80s metal CDs that the that the burglars didn't even want to steal. So that's something when that when the burglars look at your music collection and go, "Nah, <laughs> so let's oh, get man. out of here." I've never heard know. this before that I've been like, if someone was to burgle me, I feel like I should apologize. <laughs> like, like, yeah, you've wasted yeah. a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how I feel. Like you could have done a lot better. <laughs> so, quick question for your that you answer about going to the supermarket. I mean, quick uh, question. Yeah, do you uh, like to like cook your own food or like buy your oh. own stuff, or you just buy stuff just from the like ready food from the from the just supermarket? Just ready food. Like I I can't stand cooking, and like my my partner is Jewish, and I'm absolutely your one your partner. My partner, yeah, my oh, partner, partner is Jewish, and I'm, oh, I'm finally like he's like stereotypical like Jewish mum kind of way of like uh-huh, yeah. you, know, you get your mad about soup and yeah, 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 and it's and so they, I feel like I'm finally like leaving. I'm actually leaving lockdown more kind of nourished than uh, like more <laughs> healthy than ever because I'm like oh vitamins I'd never heard of before. Yeah. <laughs> Usually I would just have like um like sam pre made sandwiches or like fucking, uh, fucking yeah. rolls or something like that. But now I'm actually getting food made for nice. me. But then when I go back on the road, I know I'll just because you can't cook when you're in a hotel, and I'm terrible yeah. cooking anyway. So even if I had a apartment or whatever when I'm traveling, I know I would just be like, man, as long as if my partner comes with me, I'll get food made for me. Yeah, I sound, I sound so 1950s, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you well, say so when you get home, do you go like, where's my dinner? Oh, you may. I'd love. I'd where, love to go. Where's my dinner? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be with the squad and party when I come out. I have my. I should have my dinner ready. Exactly. The homosexuals are now taking the worst parts of heterosexuality <laughs> and just bringing them in. <laughs> you guys I'd are flipping the. Script. I got a slap in the face, man. I get. I'd probably get a slap in the face if I was like, "Where's my fucking dinner?" Um, yeah. But yeah. I, no, love, yeah, I, I mean, mean I, I would my, if I tell it to my girlfriend. Same thing. I mean, I yeah, I think, I think anybody would. This they is going to be so stereotypical because why? Well, she's not even stereotypical because the only other Venezuelan person I know was an amazing cook. Um, yeah. Do you do cooking then? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not amazing. I do cook. My my dad used to like when we moved to the U.S. He had he became like the Mister Mom type because my mom ha- was the one that had right. the so he. Actually, I don't know if he cooked before or anything. So, like, he started cooking, and I learned to cook from him. And like, so yeah, I do like to cook. You know, I do like, mm. you know, I'm, I don't do like, you know, like great dishes or anything like that. But I, I do, you know, I I cook. I mostly cook. My girlfriend sometimes cooks, you know. But I think I'm the only one. I'm, I'm pretty much the one who cooks. I mean, oh, she's listening right now. She's gonna get pissed. Uh, but fuck yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I do. I do like to. I enjoy it. I think it's just 
also when I have the time, you know what I mean? Like I like, cause it takes a while. Like if you want to do something good, like I don't like doing something fast, especially with cooking. So like, uh, what I, what it's, it's if, if I have the time I do it, but yeah, if we're like on the road or anything like that, like, yeah, I don't, I do like to eat good. Like I do like to eat different stuff. I'm like healthy. That's why I do, I do agree. Or like same thing that you do, like go to supermarkets, but if I'm in a good city, in a city to buy good, like healthy food, All right. you know, All like, like I find exactly the same shit everywhere I go. I could be any uh, country yeah, world, no. I'll still buy the same crap. Ah, uh, yeah, no, no. If I get like, if I'm in a city and I'm like, oh, they have like a, like a Whole Foods type of like, you know, or, or sprouts or like a healthy supermarket, I'm like, oh, I'll drive like an hour just to go get that, just to get, and get like nuts and stuff. Like, cause if I'm in, the, cause especially if I'm coming after the the gig and I'm like, you know, I'm hungry at night and I'm like, instead of like. I'm like, let me eat some nuts or some shit, you know, like healthy shit, you know. I, I find people like you insane. <laughs> <laughs> How could you be that? Like, I even find it weird when people queue for a restaurant they really like. I find that. Yeah, neat. I can't stand that. No, no, I don't do, I, I don't like doing lines to like. But, but you drive an hour to get ingredients. Well, during the day, no, not ingredients, just to buy like like if it's like it's during the day like when you're on the road like there's nothing else going it's not like you're like i'm not doing it you know like so it's kind of like yeah i'll go drive like well not 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 an hour but like like half hour 45 40 minutes to to a whole foods just to get like you know snacks that are healthy instead of like going to a any liquor store and getting like pork rinds or something like that which you know <laughs> yeah. like oh, i prefer to eat you know so it's just for me because knowing funny. like Especially if I smoke weed or anything like that, then then all bets are off. So like, if if I don't have it, <laughs> right. in, in my you know, then I won't eat it. That's my yeah. thing. Yeah. Then you'll wind up going to get pork rinds. Yeah, 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 yeah. In yeah, case, I get that. He's worried I, I, about leaving any leaving his house at all, man. In case he gets boggled, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> I was even thinking actually as well, is that the reason why you've got that blue screen behind you so nobody knows where you are? <laughs> That's right. It's all a mystery, man. He's in Australia I, right now. I'm a, I'm, a man, I'm a man of mystery. You know, I could, I could be anywhere right now. Who knows? Who says man? weed makes you paranoid? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% with you on that. I, I, I go to the grocery store and it's like what we said about the, uh, you're tired on the road. I kind of like getting back to the hotel room and chilling with, I mean, I try to keep the snacks kind of healthy, hmm. but, uh, but it's like I said, I, if I get to the, if I get to a grocery store and uh, you can judge a town on what's in the reduced to clear aisle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can tell, Oh, they're not, they're, they're not healthy in this town, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but I like chilling. Sometimes I don't even have the patience to wait at a restaurant for, for a takeaway food to take back to the hotel. I'll just like, just give me something from the grocery store. And do you and eat, that's a question. There. Do you eat, Larry, do you eat, like if you're by yourself on the road and you go to a restaurant and eat by yourself? Like, no, no, no you don't. No. Oh, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> is that why people, what people would think is that, because we all are self-conscious and be like, oh, he's, by himself eating or, or you just don't like no, it? I don't even like um I don't even like eating out with someone else. I'm not <laughs> aware of it. Like I find it really odd because uh I kind of uh, me and my, my partner had this we had a, on our second date we went out for food and then I said to him uh, I got a bit pissed and I said oh it's we're going out for food because I don't like eating out and he was like oh cool I don't like eating out either. I, I, I and he said something I was like that's exactly the same thing as me. He says I don't understand people eating in front of each other with the lights on. It's just so bizarre. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I just don't like doing it. I like I like being in a, if I'm eating when I'm away traveling, I'll I'll take get stuff from the supermarket, no matter how crap it is, and then take it back to the hotel room and eat it. Like I'm like a hamster when I'm traveling. <laughs> <laughs> you just go back, you hit the food in corners of the room. You yeah, know, and then just <laughs> and then just inflate a a, a squatty party and then run. Yeah, oh god, that's even, it's even this is not even making sense to me. I'm like, no wonder I needed a squatty party for the awful stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're, we're cracking we, the code here. We're yeah, we built down and we figured it all out. You know? <laughs> it's weird in Britain too. Do you do the thing, Larry? Because what I would always do on the road, I particularly remember doing it at an Ibis in Leeds recently. But whenever 
whenever I'm on the road and I do that at the grocery store, if I get pineapples or some sort of fruit in the in that British packaging, I have to keep it on the window ledge. Because there's no, because you don't have fridges in a lot of the hotel rooms, like especially in an Ibis and stuff. So the coldest, the coldest I could get was, you know, the, with the British outside cold. So I'm keeping like fruits and stuff up on this window ledge that is <laughs> as close to cold as possible. I tell you what, no, I've never heard of anybody doing that in my life before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. That's, That's just weird. That's what I do. Well, well where else are you going to keep them in the hotel room? It'll get too you know, warm. Don't buy pineapple in the road. Like, don't buy stuff that you need to put in the in the refrigerator if you don't have a refrigerator. You're not oh, staying no, no, there to live. No, no, it's good. You want oh, some pineapple. You- we can even solve your problems in this podcast as well. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, all, we're all finding out about our mistakes. Here. Oh, so if you put a pineapple, a fruit on your windowsill at home, I promise you, no one's ever going to bug with you again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would never, that, yeah, I would a never. Burglar never will look at that and be like, <laughs> nah, we don't need to go inside that apartment. There's nothing there. It's just a pineapple in in the window. I, I'm, um, I'm glad I I'm glad I didn't tell you guys it was like chicken and shit like that too because because it is because it is. I mean, buy, if I go I'll inside buy, your I'll room, buy, I'll your buy Mark and Spencer's. I'll buy my Spencer's chicken, and yeah, as long as it's cold outside, I'll keep it up on the ledge. I mean, if I go inside your hotel room and I see a bunch of chicken in the window, I'm You're like, not, you I won't call want the to cops. I mean, like room. this guy's a serial killer. <laughs> He's well, killing people and he's got chicken on the windows. Well, 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 another thing I'm even wondering as well is how this is the 16th episode you guys have done. Yeah. How, yeah. Do, how has this just come out from you, JJ? How, I know. Yeah. This is the weirdest thing I've actually heard anybody do in a hotel room. And I've heard lots of stories and I've seen plenty of porn <laughs> videos. But the <laughs> fruit and food on the windowsill, I think, so odd. Is this maybe yeah. this is the Canadian thing because this is because we'll keep beer out in, in the snow and stuff like that too. Yeah, right? what, yeah. Which hotels are you staying that don't have refrigerators? I in never, Britain, like, there's a lot of lot oh, of hotels. Yeah. A, a lot, lot of hotels oh, okay. in Britain don't have refrigerators, and if it's cold enough outside, you can get perishable food with the knowledge that you can keep it on your on your window. This is like it makes it still. You guys aren't like making me think that I'm wrong in this. You're trying to. <laughs> But it's not working. I'm still going, yeah, if it's nice and cold outside, I will keep food on the ledge. All right. It's, all right. Uh, Each to the road. road. It's <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you ask me, Francesco, I think it's just a phase he's going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it's something that he needs to discuss with his therapist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. All right. Last question. I, I, what's it called? <laughs> they may give you medication, but fuck knows when you put it. <laughs> well, we're, okay. Where do you put your food if you don't have a fridge in your hotel room? I don't buy Just, food uh, if uh, I uh, can uh, put it on a. Ref- I, I'll buy dry snacks or anything like that that you don't yeah. need refrigerated. If I don't have a refrigerator, that's my thing. If I don't have a refrigerator in my hotel room, I'm not gonna buy chicken to put oh, in, a, in a window. And, Let- and I'm a. <laughs> Let's let chicken, man. Let's chicken. It's delicious. All right. Okay. Um, it's been marinated in dust. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you, yeah you don't you take go. it out of the packaging. I mean, this is like very 1500s. <laughs> like, I feel like you're like in the 1500s. It's like, you, like well, you know, well, put chicken. Like, well, have you, have you toured England before? Because sometimes you no, feel I'm like not. you're in the 1500s. So. All right. Uh, so the last question we had is, what is a tradition or custom from somewhere you visited that you love to introduce to Scotland? And you mentioned uh, the service industry that, that you know, Americans in the U.S. have, uh, which I agree with that. I think that's a very thing that's, that, they, that you get used to, especially living here in the U.S., of the whole, like, even return policy. Like, that's such a crazy thing that you can literally, you know, have the jacket that you uh, wear it and then bring it back and be like, Sorry, I want to return it. And they actually get it. They don't ask yeah. any questions. Like, yeah, like in South America, that's not, you don't do that. I mean, I don't think that's like you buy it and then that's it. It's like all, all sales are fine art kind of stuff. And and with uh, restaurants yeah. too as well. It's all doing that because I'm like with, because uh, even with uh, American service, they actually seem happy with their job. And, yeah. And I find that's quite a comforting thing because you know that like, number one thing when you do a stand-up is people say, 
just look like you're having fun mm -hmm. and then they'll have fun. And I find even like when I was, uh, I was in, um, what do you call it? In uh, uh, California for like two weeks, a couple years ago. And I absolutely just loved how everyone says that Californians are fake. And I was a bit like, I don't, I even said to him, I was like, I don't give a fuck if they're fake. I, I just, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? It's like I'd rather someone pretends that they're happy <laughs> them there than someone who's going to just be completely blunt. Because um, yeah. I even thought when you asked that question, I was even thinking, I was like, I can't think of anything that particularly that I would want to bring in. It's difficult because Scottish Scotland's got so much cultural stuff that I don't think we can handle anymore. Because if you think <laughs> about like, kilt, bagpipes, haggis, heroin... It's like, it's so, there's so much stuff in Scotland. I'm like, Scotland's a bit like a Halloween party that's got out of hand. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So it's difficult yeah. to know what else you could really put in uh, in Scottish culture, apart from just people being happy that you're buying or using. I just find it's like my boyfriend today was getting Mother's Day gifts, right? This is 100%. Oh, yeah, because over there is Mother's Day. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Today's Mother's Day in the UK, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, but the, uh, my boyfriend was getting his mum flowers, right? And he phoned up at flat, uh, flowers. Uh, his, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I, that's, that's when I went, I went like, I went the, the whole like, <laughs> I, 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 assume, I assume you said flow, flowers, but I was like, uh, I, I heard an F in there. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm not yeah. going to keep asking. I'm just going to like let him go. Yeah, it's probably just a wee Scottish <laughs> chop. Like, oh, flails. Oh, you got flails. Oh, I think. Oh. Um, All right. Uh, what is uh, my uh, flowers? And <laughs> when he phoned up and they said it was £30, pounds, okay. uh, I was probably like $50, right? Okay. And um, then he turned up and to collect them, and the woman behind the counter said, it's 60 pounds. And he was like, no, you said 30 on the phone. And yeah. like, this is a florist, right? Florists aren't known of like, oh. Yeah, to be nice. And, and like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not, they're not the people. They, you, these are the people that are, you're supposed to talk to when arranging a funeral. Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to you're gonna propose to somebody, you know, like exactly. the happiest or most saddest days in your life. So they should be very like, Nice. Yeah. Yes, they should be level-headed as fuck. Yeah. But she went, it's 60 quid, and you can either pay that money or get out of my shop. Wow. <laughs> what the wow. fuck? Supply and demand, motherfucker. <laughs> you want these flowers or not? <laughs> yeah. Holy. That's hilarious. I was, I, 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 who was it like? I imagine being like a, like a really old lady saying that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I didn't get the full description from. Uh, I've been in the shop before. So did, I'm pretty sure did he buy it? it? Did he had to buy it? No, no, he didn't do that. Oh, no. He was like, "Fuck you." Yeah. No, like, yeah, he actually did say that. Like, cause he, he just he said to me, he was just like, "I saw you." Know what I did. I, I was like, "What?" It was like I just said, "Well, go and fuck yourself," and I was like, "Yeah." It was like such a kind of yes, yes. Go yeah. tell him. Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, because kind of it's fucked up. Yeah, she said fifty, and now she's sixty. Like, what were? Oh, fuck. oh no, yeah. it, was 30, it was 30, and then it was oh, 60. 30, sorry. Oh, oh, double. Double. oh <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking stock, man. It was like uh, un unreal. But then um, it's quite a common thing of like, um, uh, even But like, that's a I very, in Latin America, it's kind of like that too. Because I mean, obviously, we have the very, inf you know, European, and like that's very the same thing. Like they're very, like, they will tell you that it's like, well, fuck, you know, like, like that. Or they're very trusting. Like, like waiters, for example, in, in Venezuela, like, like you're gonna, like they go, like, and you guys like, oh, uh, can I get the, you know, how's the steak? It's like, ah, you know, the steak's not that good, you know. And they start fucking t telling you this shit. And I'm like, hey, you're supposed, you work here, like, what are you telling me? And then, and then they, like, they literally could sit down with you and they, talk, and they, 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 they say like, hey man, that's a nice shirt you got, man. What's up? Where you get that? And I'm like, they become very like friendly right away. And I'm like. You're the way that, like, relax, you know, like, right. that's well, like that. Yeah. That's the kind of, um, what do you call it though? Like, um, uh, I've heard that New York is more like that than, than in yes. LA of like, it would just, just say it how it is. But that's LA true. is a lot more kind of like, you know, everything's, everything's great. Cause I like, cause I did a elocution thing, uh, like, well, to learn accents and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I got told the way of doing like a, a Californian one is to actually just show off your teeth. So it does look like you're always smiling. Oh, really? 
Yeah, like, oh my god, totally. Oh, oh, wow. How are you? Okay. okay, I'm gonna talk like this now. Yeah, yeah. What's up, boy? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. What about? Can you do a New York accent? No, I can't. I used to be able to do it, I, but I need to watch some. I need to watch some more New York shows, and then I'll be able to do it. It's that thing of like, if someone says, "Oh, he learned this accent," I usually kind of go, "Right, well, just let me watch like yeah. all the seasons of The Sopranos," and then I'll. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Hey, but th are you easy? Like, were you always like quick with accents? Like since growing up, because that's that what one is. Like I've got a bad habit of like copying people's accents when they're talking to me. Yeah, no, because um, that's always like a skill that a lot of people have, like mimicry. Like, yeah, no, I mean like when you're young, like I think like I I always noticed like, for example, I just performed your friend of mine, Elisabeth Senor, and she's like, uh, she can imitate very, you know, great, you know, like you know, and like she's been doing that since she was little, you know. So I was like yeah. saying, do do you always? That was a very natural thing for you to like grab, well, it, like hear voice and do. And with, um, and do with like, if I love something, then I'll tend to be really, really good at the accent. So like gremlin voices and like, um, huh. I can do creature voices tend to be. <laughs> wow. So I can do like tend to do the wow. more kind of like weirder voices than a, than an actual accent. So it's weird when people say, "Oh, you can do impressions." I'm like, "Yeah, but only of weird creatures." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but man, I'm pretty sure worked. you would get it right away. Like if you like, if you get a part on something, and they're like, "Hey, you know, be American oh, yeah. from Boston," you're like, you can get oh, it pretty easy. Mate, that's the annoying thing, though. Like, is when someone says to you, "Oh, can you? Uh, uh, we want you to audition for this." It's because they want you to do the your voice, so they want you to be Scottish. Because I had mm. someone audition for like a cartoon, and he wanted it to be Scottish. I was like, "Oh." I was like, the whole point of this is I like pretending to be other people. I don't want to be me. Going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, there's my self-esteem issues coming out here. I don't want to be, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to be somebody else. I want to be JJ. <laughs> but swap, brother. <laughs> I don't want to be me with, with my Scottish accent. Oh yeah, that's what I've always said about when you know when you uh, you know when some you're, you're on a date with someone and you can tell they really like you. And then your in, your instinct is, oh, you like me? Oh, I used to think a lot of you. Like my my, I have an ex girlfriend who, who I have an ex girlfriend who once said to me, she said to me, I I thought I liked you, but now that you love me, I, I don't I don't I can't trust anybody who could love somebody like me. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, this is That's never hilarious. gonna work. That's hell? hilarious. Yeah. That's yeah. like that Seinfeld Seinfeld episode. That's like the Seinfeld episode when Jerry goes out with somebody that's like is the same as him, and he's like, "It's like this is not gonna work." It's like why? Because <laughs> it's like you're too much like me. I can't. I don't. I hate me. <laughs> I can't like somebody that's just like me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it was ridiculous. That's fine. Thanks, and that makes you self conscious. Well, I think we're uh, to, at the end of the of the. Thank you for uh, for answering those uh, questions and and, and uh, we got. <laughs> For being I'm so, so honest with us, I'm so professional because I'm a bit like I'm actually already kind of bouncing around because I'm thinking I, I, I need the toilet. That's <laughs> oh, dear. I need to blow up a squatty potty to go as well. <laughs> um, but, well, um, well, buddy, before we sign up, we always <laughs> ask, we always have to ask one last thing, and it's just if, if is there any travel advice that pops into your mind that you would love to pass on to people? Is there any kind of you know last uh, pearl of wisdom? Travel. You know. Learn, I, I think teach yourself to sleep sleep anywhere because I can fall asleep ah. so easily from traveling. Um, yes. And I've fallen asleep yeah. in the middle of crowds of people uh, mm -hmm. that are laughing or making noise just because I've got so... I, I taught cool. myself of like, it's either I'm going to be bored on this train for hours yeah. or I'll have to sleep. And I just train myself to learn to sleep anywhere. That's good. And nice. can you sleep That's quickly good. too? Can you yeah, like? Yeah, I can fall asleep in like a, in about a minute or two. Yeah, that's great. That's right. That's, uh... it's, the, it's the shittest superpower to have. But it is a good. <laughs> it, I was gonna say that's a very good. A lot of people are envious on that, but it is like a. It's kind of yeah. like in the in the low end of Marvel superheroes, but it's still a superpower. Yeah, yeah. You know that, I mean? like, that's oh why my I have my, I have my favorite road bag. I have my favorite road bag, and it fits perfectly like on my knees up to here, and I'm able to just sit it. On my lap, and then sit my chin on it, and just oh, sleep. I think you, doing that makes you look as if you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got a crush on the guy off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... He sleeps like that too when he's on in his hotel room. He yeah. gets on the bed like this, and then watches the chicken in the window, like uh, oh, yeah, nice I got, chicken. 
I have to guard it from the bird. <laughs> <laughs> well, <One eye> open, <laughs> man. oh man larry thank you so much man for joining us we really appreciate it i mean right? uh that was awesome yeah. it was great to meet you hopefully we get to uh oh get yeah from here, over there. There. anything if anybody oh, who's yeah. listening and any or watching or whatever if anybody works in u.s immigration and <laughs> possibly please i want this is you know you know how youtubers and all that start with like youtubers as you go hey I'm thinking, make sure you subscribe. My dream is to do this. Yeah. I'm my dream has always been I want to move to America, but it's difficult to move to America as a stand-up because they're a bit like, yeah, you're not gonna earn enough money for a visa. So if anybody works in immigration, please help. What a weird way of ending a show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very professional. I idea. To Larry. <laughs> no, well, that's what I was saying to you. This might be the right thing to do it on because I'm going through my green card stuff right now. I've got to go into well, my JJ green card. JJ can help you because know, he did the I, whole thing. Right. Well, I have I haven't accomplished it yet, but I have to go into my green card physical tomorrow. Okay. And, oh, that's oh, forget about card. that. So you actually like a oh, doc, like a doctor's appointment? Yeah, you actually have to get a specific. There's green card approved doctors that you have to get specific, like because I've had a physical had recently, that. but my Bob Hope, the, the Bob Hope Clinic doctor, isn't. They're not green card worthy or whatever it is. So yeah, because it's from <laughs> Bob Hope, like he's dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I go to a hospital of dead doctors. <laughs> yeah, well, awesome. so, well, yeah. JJ can definitely help you because he's been here uh, a while and uh, legally. <laughs> you said so, that like you're exhausted. He's been here a while. No, no. <laughs> I mean, no. Like, in, fuck off. <laughs> no, no. I think he like you know you know how to do it because I did it. I, I did it because my parents came here, so like I cannot yeah. help you. Actually, I'll get an artist. I, I was I, I was gonna say, Francisco, I was a bit like it sounds so weird with your accent of you going, Oh well th this guy can help you. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, that guy, not me. That I can I, I, I can't, I'm yeah. American citizen. Yeah, I'm American. I'm sorry, you, man. I can't help you, Brad. <laughs> JJ can. <laughs> I can give you a tip though, Larry. Uh, like when I did my first uh, O1 visa application, I was eight, eight years ago, 2012. I put in my application. I got my first visa like 2014. So plan in advance. Plan to have a year up in the air kind of thing. But my application was but a phone book sized it was just pages and pages but yeah. my lawyers it was because they took shit like even if you have a two for one sale at edinburgh or something like that and it, you know how mm. it goes in the corner of the list and it's only like two centimeters big right. that they would put that on one sheet it would take up the whole oh, like yeah, one okay cool so every little thing that you have in your career cut yeah. and paste it onto one sheet and then in the end your application will be like this phone book ah, like, okay look cool at all. Look at all this press. Yes. Look at all these achievements. Look at so, all these, uh, look at all these weird creatures that he can do voices on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that too. Uh, but, but thanks, brother. I mean, it'd be awesome. Mate. Uh, hopefully, we'll work with you. I mean, it was a pleasure working with you in Brighton. It was a treat. It's always a treat when you meet a new comic and who you get along with for a whole weekend oh, away. Yeah, it, you know, it, well, I'll put. I'll post the pictures of it uh, when this when this goes out. <laughs> yeah, there you, yes. there you go. Let's redo the pictures and then we can pretend that we're there. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, man. You. It was great to meet you, man. Thank, thank you very you so much. much. And hopefully, guys. yeah, we yeah. can either meet over there or when you come over here and then uh, and yeah and get some. Um, I was gonna say pints, but I don't know. It's like that was like yeah, that. Let's get, to, let's get some window ledge food, man. And a window go. ledge. That yeah. doesn't matter. Go for some the window, window ledge food. chicken. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah I'll, man. I'll, I'll, get it ready for, I'll get it ready for you guys. <laughs> there you go. Cheers, brother. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye, hello.